What's going on, my fellow A plusers? Welcome back once again to our brand new review as we're going to be getting into Titans season three episode number three ladies and gentlemen as we continue along the great momentum that titan season three has certainly built up so far over on hbo max we wind up getting the first three episodes this past week uh, we've been bringing you our episode reviews one by one so if you want to check out our episodes one and two they're currently up already on our youtube page and we're about to hit you with episode number three another great episode if you certainly ask me um i feel like just the way that they've set up these first three episodes talk about just leaving a fantastic taste in your mouth coming out of the gates just sort of swinging and punching leaving us on, on some fantastic cliffhangers right batman killing the joker in episode one jason todd being revealed as the red hood in episode number two and then unfortunately man the death of hawk or i should say the death of hank aka hawk at the end of episode three I mean, they're they're really going out of their way to push the envelope, and I could not be more appreciative, to be quite honest with you. Um, this is how you certainly make a impact, especially its debut on HBO Max, and I'm really hoping that um, they can continue with this momentum and hopefully get a season four out of this, to be perfectly honest with you. The way that this show has been put together, how far along our characters have certainly come, everybody clearly seems a lot more comfortable in their particular roles, getting the opportunity opportunity to do do more they're not really stretching the characters thin I think we have a, a good number of characters for us to certainly play with so far and they've been doing a really great job of just ex execution wise allowing everybody to certainly shine and certainly do their part so you know it's just funny to me we were talking in episode two and I was talking about how great it certainly was to certainly see Hank back, right? Like he really left a bad taste in my mouth in season two. He just felt like a character that was just all over the place, not able to find himself. He just felt vastly different than what we wind up getting in the season one. And one of the things that I talked about in episode two was just praising the idea that it feels like Hank is back to his old self again. Um, and so I was really excited to kind of see how they would implement him in the entirety of season three. I had no idea they had planned on certainly killing them off you know now anytime that I go back and I look at any of my reviews and anytime that I've crapped on the concept of Hank and Dove you know Hawk and Dove even being in this series to begin with as they were never really initial members of the Titans in the comic books as much crap as I certainly have given them in the past now that Hank is gone, I feel pretty bad. Like, I feel pretty terrible, honestly. But, um, you know, I think that just goes to show you the impact that maybe the character certainly did leave on me, uh, especially me being kind of happy at the idea that it felt like he was back to his old ways and his old self in here. So, you know, the fact that he's come back to Titan's Tower, trying to get his woman back, um, doing whatever he can to kind of get his foot in the doorway, I truly did appreciate. But, you know sometimes he is just a pretty face maybe sometimes there isn't just anything necessarily up here in regards to his thinking process and the way that he wants to sort of handle situations right like not every situation is i'm just gonna beat him up sort of thing right um the fact that he decides to kind of go off on his own embark to try and find jason todd on his own really selfish and just really dumb honestly like based off of everything that's happened so far in this season the lengths that this red hood guy is certainly going to finding out now that it's jason i mean after everything that jason's done so far the idea of just thinking i'm gonna talk to the kid and try and bring him in on my own not necessarily the smartest right not necessarily the smartest so probably just a pretty face uh when it comes to hank unfortunately and he does find himself literally walking directly into a trap here that i think we all saw certainly coming where uh jason todd kidnaps him and now attaches a bomb to poor hank that's uh counting down to the heartbeats if you will um uh, for hank as many as, as many as he certainly has left so crazy technology we do come to find out that this is bruce wayne tech uh, uh, one of the things that Scarecrow certainly helped Dick Grayson discover is the idea that maybe he's trying to 
one up his father, if you will, in a sense of Bruce Wayne and Batman, maybe using some of Batman's old old tricks, right, or old technology uh, to kind of get the upper hand in here. And we do see that Jason does go deep into the Batman tech and uses this bomb uh, for for Hank, unfortunately. Um, I am very much under the impression that he's got to be working with somebody else, right? I mean, I think they, they, they I think they feel pretty sure that when it comes to somebody like a Jason Todd, he's never really been known to be the book smart type of person, if anything, more street smarts than anything. Um, so to kind of see him using technology, coming up with these game plans that seemingly seem to be like one step ahead of the Titans at all times, kind of catching Dick Grayson sort of on his heels and on his back foot and them trying to have to play catch up. That doesn't really feel like a Jason Todd move to me. You know what I mean? So I am kind of curious as to who he certainly has working with him behind the scenes. It really wouldn't surprise me if it's actually the Scarecrow. I mean, can you imagine the idea of the Scarecrow being a consultant for the GPCD or the GCPD? but also working alongside Jason Todd at some particular point. So it wouldn't surprise me uh, if those two uh, certainly are working together, uh, but we'll see how everything winds up unfolding. I mean, the idea alone that he's playing these mind games and uh, pushing the Titans to do things that they normally wouldn't, right? Putting Hank's life out on the line, really forcing Dove to um, kind of do things that she normally wouldn't. The idea of her even picking up a gun and threatening to shoot somebody, the idea of being in love and, and wanting to save somebody is a very powerful thing, right? And despite the fact of having somebody like Dick Grayson telling you not to pull the trigger, you know, her emotions alone literally let her also sort of walk into this trap that Jason Todd has kind of put in front of them. So again, Jason Todd being one step ahead, instead of having the detonator, letting the gun be the detonator. I mean, can you imagine what that must feel like for Dove knowing that she's really the one that kind of gave... Um, you know, a, a killed Hank by her own very hands in the sense of not wanting to be patient or trusting the team and being able to get things done and wanting to kind of do it for yourself, right? Um, so she definitely was willing to cave and give the man anything that she wanted to. And in return, she certainly is, has paid the price along with Hank, unfortunately. So um, very emotional, man. I like just seeing her break down. I felt absolutely terrible for her. If you ask me, Superboy was going to get there in time. Special effects wise, I thought that was a great shot. Seeing him get to the bedroom just as that explosion is certainly hitting. Uh, if you ask me, if he he had like five more seconds left on there. Uh, and if you ask me, I think Superboy easily would have made it to him in time to go ahead and deactivate it. But, um, you know, the power of love will make you do some crazy ass things. And Jason Todd certainly took advantage of it. And it's just a shame, right? Because of the fact that this team has done so so much to kind of get where they're at, um, just family wise and bond wise um, over the past two seasons, right? We've seen the distrust and the lies between everybody. And now Jason Todd is almost systematically taking the Titans apart again. Now killing Hank. I don't know how much mentality Dove is certainly going to have to continue to pursue Jason Todd um, or where she's going to just be at uh, in her head. You know what I mean? So maybe the pieces this maybe this is a part of having the titans crumble all over again who certainly knows but jason todd is certainly leaving his mark as the red hood to certainly say the least but again there is a level of unbelievability to it when i see jason doing all this stuff so i really do hope that jason does have somebody else that's helping him because there is a really far leap uh, of seeing jason todd from season two to thinking that guy is more than capable of doing everything that he's doing here in season three maybe that's just me but it seems like a rather huge leap so we'll see if there's anybody else uh kind of pulling the strings here when it comes to jason or somebody that he's definitely working with a couple other things um, I love that Superboy kind of shines in this episode. Um, the fact that his speed reading, like when I saw him doing his speed reading, I definitely attributed it to that of like Barry Allen and the Flash, right? Like if you can read and comprehend at that particular speed, I would certainly think if you're trying to figure out how to then deconstruct something or uh, build something else based off of that technology, the more reading you do, all that stuff has now got to be implemented in your head. So I would think if Connor truly wanted to become a genius, he could probably just read all the books in the library and I would think that his mind would be able to certainly handle that. So a really cool aspect. I'm glad that they utilized his, his speed reading in here to see that it definitely did come into handy and it's uh, just another strength of Connor Kent. 
can't for the for the Titans as the season definitely progresses. Um, when it comes to Starfire, we did see um, her storyline progress very little. Um, she's starting to continue to say, feel those same effects. Um, I don't know necessarily if it's visions or whatever the case may be in this episode, um, but she's definitely experienced some sort of calling, some sort of vi vision still. She didn't necessarily address it in here, but this is the third time in a row that something has definitely happened. So would not surprise me with the, if within the next couple of episodes, Starfire maybe has a more uh, a centered position when it comes to the storylines in here but um I, I love what we're getting so far guys like i, I truly am um I, I think the idea of hank and dove possibly coming back together i i kind of enjoyed the idea of them making out in the bed and what i mean by that is the idea of like seeing hank's uh heartbeat kind of go go up sort of thing right kind of get a little bit more excited having to kind of back him off a little bit like all right buddy maybe we should could kind of calm you down a little bit but it, it was something about that relationship that certainly did miss again i didn't mind him in seasons one and uh, seasons one i thought they actually worked really really well together um but season two was just kind of just left a bad taste in my mouth and how they really handled their relationship just over some petty and stupid ass stuff if you ask me so i appreciate appreciated Hank trying to at least get his woman back uh, and really showcasing that there is certainly love between those two, despite everything that certainly happened. But uh, to kind of have this sort of tragic end, first we had Aqua Lad in season two, not another, uh, an the death of another Titan in here. It's going to be brutal to have to come back from, but um, I'm, I'm loving everything that we've, we've gotten so far, guys. But listen, I, I want to know your thoughts. What do you think so far about Kieran Walters? I, I really am enjoying him a lot better as Red Hood than I am sort of as Robin. I mean, don't get me wrong. I certainly didn't mind him as Robin, but seeing him tap into just this other sort of emotional state, right? Like the, the fake crying on the phone call and stuff as an actor to be able to draw those tears and stuff. Uh, I mean, listen, if I was Hank, I clearly wouldn't have fallen for it. Um, you know, I mean, th this guy is crazy, you know, um, uh, clear off his lid. If there is anything that kind of fascinates me though it is the idea of jason um his body being taken away and bruce wayne not knowing the difference right because you know bruce was quick to talk about the idea like oh the funeral's done he's been buried sort of thing and we see this episode in the beginning of dick grayson literally digging up the casket of jason todd to find his coffin unfortunately empty and we clearly see that somebody ended up sort of switching the body so it does make wonder one wonder how did he come back to life was he dead at all sort of thing is this part of his a big master plan that he's had the entire time i love the fact that they even bring up the lazarus pit if i'm not mistaken in the in the comics didn't they use the lazarus pit to bring him back in the first place and then he turned into red hood i could be wrong i'm not too familiar in regards to jason todd's journey into red hood so for me th this is a great sort of um uh, adaption if you will to that storyline so i was under the impression that maybe from the comics I was I just thought maybe it was like the Lazarus pit sort of brought him back to life. But the fact that this gets past somebody like a Bruce Wayne to not even check the coffin or even check the body to verify the identity of who it is that you're burying. It is one of those things of just a, a terrible lapse in judgment. How somebody's how Bruce Wayne's grief has really made him extremely sloppy at that point um, to again, not necessarily caring about the people that you are bringing into your life and really just using them sort of as weapons. So I think it really says something about Bruce Wayne and Batman as a whole that something like this has kind of even gotten past him. You know what I mean? So he's got to be working with somebody else. I just can't imagine Jason Todd just jumping off the deep end. I mean, I know the homeboy was literally going through a bunch of stuff. But what we saw from him in episode one, it felt like he was very much still trying to be a good Robin and overcome some of his fears. So where the change certainly came from, I mean, I'm sure there's certainly some things that would warrant him wanting to just turn into a bad guy. But I don't think anybody certainly expected him to be like a, a, a cold blooded killer. You know what I mean? Uh, and coming up with these v vastly superior plans, uh, keeping Dick Grayson, like I said, on his heels and not being able to keep up sort of thing. 
it definitely speaks volume. So I, I, I love what we're getting so far, guys. Three strong episodes, three brilliant episodes with some amazing finishes in here. I cannot wait to see how the remainder of this season goes. So listen, I, if, if I'm WB right now, if I'm HBO Max after these three episodes, I'm already renewing Titans for a season four. I'm already renewing it. I, I already am. If they can captivate me this much, three episodes in, I think we might be onto something special. So listen, I've said this before in regards to seasons one and two, the, the storylines tend to be relatively strong. I feel like even though this feels like a step above anything that we've seen so far, but it's really the execution and the landing of usually the second half of the season that really starts making me worry. So as excited as I am, I'm still going to hold on to my my uh, my hesitancy to a certain extent. But damn if this hasn't been impressive, guys. But listen, these are just my A-plus opinions. At the end of the day, I wanna know yours. Listen, if there's anything that I missed, whether that be character moments, uh, storyline details that you wanna further discuss for maybe some of your favorite characters that happened in this episode, please let your thoughts be known in the live chat or the comment section box below. Um, and then we'll definitely go ahead and continue along with that conversation. But um, other than that, guys, that's gonna do it for us here. So in the meantime, do me a big favor, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and as always, keep it A+. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.